Over the last two decades, scientists have made great progress in understanding the origins of modern humans. Research shows that anatomically modern humans who were genetically and physically like us first appeared in Africa at least 300,000 years ago. However, these humans began spreading to other parts of the world around 65,000 years ago, much later than their initial appearance, replacing older human species like Neanderthals. However, two main questions remain. Why did it take so long for them to leave Africa? And what changes helped them succeed in new environments? The earliest known members of the Homo sapiens clade exhibit significant morphological diversity and a broad geographic distribution. Fossils from Jebel Irhoud in Morocco, dated to approximately 300,000 years ago, display facial structures akin to modern humans, but possess elongated, archaic brain cases. Similarly, the Florisbad skull from South Africa, dated to around 260,000 years ago, has been interpreted as an early representative of Homo sapiens. Additionally, remains from Omo Kibish and Herto in Ethiopia, dating between 195,000 and 160,000 years ago, exhibit a mix of modern and archaic traits, highlighting the complex evolutionary journey of our species. This widespread fossil evidence indicates that early Homo sapiens populations were not confined to a single region, but were dispersed throughout the continent each exhibiting unique anatomical features. The African archaeological record reveals regionally distinct material cultures during the Pleistocene, suggesting independent technological and cultural developments among semi-isolated populations. For instance, Middle Stone Age artifacts associated with early Homo sapiens have been found across various African sites, reflecting diverse adaptations to local environments. Genetic studies indicate that the deep population structure observed in present-day African populations extends back tens of thousands of years. This genetic diversity parallels paleo-environmental records of shifting and fragmented habitable zones, supporting the notion of long-standing, regionally distinct populations that occasionally interbred. The discovery of other hominin species, such as Homo naledi in South Africa, dating between 335,000 and 236,000 years ago, suggests that multiple hominin species coexisted with early Homo sapiens. This raises the possibility of interbreeding and genetic exchange, further complicating the evolutionary landscape. The analysis of mitochondrial DNA patterns in present-day African lineages points strongly to an episode of rapid population growth in the ancestral African populations within the time range from 60,000 to 80,000 years ago, around more than 200,000 years after the inferred last common ancestor. Similar patterns were seen in Asia around 60,000 years ago and in Europe about 40,000 years ago. Similar patterns were seen in Asia around 60,000 years ago and in Europe about 40,000 years ago. This suggests Africa experienced population expansion much earlier than the rest of the world. The evidence as a whole points strongly to a major and apparently rapid increase in African population numbers much earlier than that experienced in either Asia or Europe and apparently involving expansion by means of a demographic diffusion wave from a relatively small population nucleus probably confined to a fairly small region of Africa, to other parts of the continent. Other studies focused on specific African mitochondrial DNA lineages, particularly L2 and L3. These lineages expanded rapidly between 80,000 and 60,000 years ago, likely starting in Eastern or Southern Africa, and then spreading across the continent reaching Western Africa by at least 30,000 to 40,000 BP and perhaps across the mouth of the Red Sea to the adjacent parts of Southern Asia by 60,000 to 65,000 BP. While it's unclear whether this spread was due to actual migration or just the spread of genetic traits, it points to a significant event, likely involving both cultural and population changes that led to the rapid growth and expansion of modern humans from a small African region. The key question is, what caused the sudden growth in African populations around 60,000 to 80,000 years ago? To understand this, we turn to recent archaeological findings, especially from Southern Africa. Important discoveries have been made at sites like Blombos Cave in Clazies River on the southern coast, and Boomplas Cave in Deepkloof further inland. These sites date to the Middle Stone Age, which lasted from about 250,000 to 40,000 years ago 
and line up with the Middle Paleolithic period in Europe and Asia. Some specific layers in these sites, like the Still Bay and Howison's port levels, date from around 75,000 to 55,000 years ago. These layers show a big leap in technology and culture compared to earlier African Middle Stone Age sites. The tools and artifacts found here are very similar to what appeared much later in Europe and Western Asia, around 45,000 to 50,000 years ago, during the so-called Upper Paleolithic Revolution. The African sites reveal advanced tool-making techniques, like making sharp blades with soft hammer methods, and specialized tools for working with skin, bone, and wood, like end scrapers and burns. They also found shaped bone tools likely used for spears and needles small stone tips possibly for arrows or spears, and even personal ornaments like perforated shells. Importantly, pieces of red ochre with abstract designs were discovered at Blombos Cave. These are the oldest known examples of symbolic or artistic expression. There's also evidence of long-distance trade or movement, with high-quality stone and shell beads being transported over 20 to 30 kilometers. Altogether, these findings show that humans in Southern Africa were developing advanced cultural behaviors about 20,000 years earlier than similar developments in Europe. This was a dynamic and creative time in African prehistory, marking a major turning point in human development. The recent archaeological discoveries in Southern Africa help explain the significant population growth seen between 80,000 and 60,000 years ago, as suggested by genetic evidence. Although the exact reasons for this expansion remain unclear, Four key developments in the archaeological record seem important. First, tools from sites like Blombos Cave and Clazy's River suggest more advanced hunting weapons, such as bone spearheads and multi-part tools, which may even have included early versions of arrows. Even if archery wasn't yet in use, these innovations likely made hunting more effective and increased food availability. Second, there is evidence from Clazy's River of burnt plant remains, including root crops like Watsonia. Some researchers believe this might indicate early attempts at managing plant food resources, possibly by burning vegetation to boost crop yields. If true, this could resemble early agricultural practices, though this idea is still speculative. Third, findings at Blombos Cave suggest the systematic use of marine food, including fish and seabirds. This shows an expanded use of available food sources. Fourth, the presence of imported materials, like high-quality stone and decorative shells, suggests trade or exchange networks between groups. These networks could have helped people share resources, especially during times when food was scarce. All these innovations may have increased the environment's ability to support more people, leading to population growth. Even though the DNA evidence has some uncertainty, the timing of these behavioral changes and population expansion seems closely linked Importantly, this doesn't mean that the entire African population increased at that time. In fact, some regions likely experienced population declines due to harsh, dry climates between 60,000 and 30,000 years ago. Rather, these innovations may have allowed populations in Southern Africa to grow and spread into other regions, replacing or absorbing earlier human groups with less advanced technology. Trying to pinpoint the exact origin of the behavioral changes and population growth in early humans is difficult because there is a lack of well-documented archaeological sites across many regions of sub-Saharan Africa, especially in Central and Eastern Africa. This makes it risky to assume that South Africa was the starting point just because its sites are currently the most well-studied. In fact, similar technologies to those found in South Africa like the Howison's port tools, have also been found in other parts of Africa, including Tanzania and Kenya, far to the north. However, dating these sites accurately is still a challenge, so it's possible that these advanced tool technologies and the associated behaviors may have started elsewhere in Africa before appearing in South Africa. Regardless of where they began, the widespread of these technologies suggests there may have been a large movement or expansion of populations across sub-Saharan Africa between about 70,000 and 55,000 years ago. Some researchers even suggest that this new package of modern behaviors, reflected in technologies like Still Bay and Howison's Port, played a key role in humans spreading from southern Africa into other parts of Africa and eventually into Asia and Europe after 70,000 years ago. The big question remains, 
What caused these sudden changes in human behavior around 80,000 to 70,000 years ago? One theory is that it was due to a major leap in human brain development. Another theory is that these changes were responses to new environmental challenges, such as climate shifts. Interestingly, these environmental changes happened around the same time as the rapid rise in new technologies, social practices, and communication styles, making this connection worth exploring further. Even if we believe that changes in behavior in Southern Africa were mostly responses to environmental challenges, we can't ignore the evidence that some important shifts in human thinking and behavior also occurred around the time our species emerged. One key piece of evidence comes from Northern Africa, where anatomically modern humans briefly spread into nearby Southwest Asia between 177,000 to 194,000, and again, between 110,000 and 90,000 years ago. This is best shown by skeletons found at the sites of Mislia, Skul, and Kafzeh in Israel. The Mislia I fossil, found in Israel, was dated to around 177,000 to 194,000 years ago, using multiple scientific methods, including analysis of the tooth, nearby sediment, and burned tools. This finding is significant because it may show one of the earliest known migrations of Homo sapiens out of Africa. However, we don't yet know if early humans lived in this region continuously or only during certain climate-friendly periods. Evidence suggests humid phases around 244,000 to 190,000 years ago may have allowed human movement into the area, though arid periods likely made long-term settlement difficult. It's unlikely that the people at Mislia directly evolved into the later populations at Skul and Kafze, but they might have spread further into Eurasia and interacted with Neanderthals, possibly sharing genes and tools. Genetic studies suggest most gene flow from Neanderthals into modern humans happened around 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, though some earlier exchanges may have occurred even before the Mislia fossils time. Three features of these sites are especially important. First, some skeletons were buried in what seemed to be ceremonial graves, with items like a deer antler and a boar's jaw placed alongside the bodies. Second, the Kafze site included pierced seashells, probably used as ornaments, and red ochre, likely used as a pigment, both signs of symbolic behavior. Third, despite these signs of symbolic thought, the tools found with these remains were still basic, typical of the older Middle Stone Age, and lacked the more advanced technology seen in later African sites like Blombos and Clazy's River. This suggests that even though these people were anatomically modern and showed symbolic behavior, their technology had not yet advanced. It's also notable that their movement into Southwest Asia didn't last long. Neanderthals returned to dominate the region about 70,000 years ago. This could mean that the early modern humans, despite their cognitive abilities, lacked the technological and social systems needed to compete with the long-established Neanderthals, especially during the colder climate of that period. The development of modern human behavior didn't happen all at once. It was a mosaic process, meaning different traits appeared at different times. Symbolic behaviors, like rituals and art, seem to have developed before major advances in tools. For example, the 160,000-year-old modern human skulls from Herto in Ethiopia were found with old-style tools but may show signs of symbolic treatment, like rituals. This raises questions about how and when modern thinking and language evolved. If symbolism reflects modern thinking, then such abilities likely existed 100,000 to 150,000 years ago, alongside anatomically modern humans. Later advances in technology, economy, and society could simply be the result of gradually using these new mental skills as people face new challenges, similar to how farming societies later developed. Another idea is that Brain development didn't happen all at once, but through multiple genetic changes over time. Some recent gene studies, like microcephalin and FOXP2, suggest this could be true, and a new mutation around 80,000 years ago might explain the burst of cultural and technological changes seen in the archaeological record. Testing these ideas is difficult, as it's hard to prove whether new behaviors came from new brain capacities or just better use of existing ones. Therefore, the gradual development of modern human behavior is one of the primary reasons for delayed out-of-Africa migration. While Homo sapiens emerged in Africa around 300,000 years ago, 
Complex cognitive traits like symbolic thinking, advanced toolmaking, and social organization did not fully develop until a major leap around 80,000 years ago. These traits were essential for survival in new, unfamiliar environments. As these capabilities became more refined, humans became better equipped to explore and adapt to new territories. Technological limitations also played a role. Early humans initially lacked the tools necessary for long-distance travel and survival in different climates. Innovations such as improved stone tools, control of fire, clothing, and methods of food storage allowed for more sustained and successful migrations. In addition, early human populations were small and scattered, which naturally slowed the pace of expansion. Migration requires a certain population, density, and social cooperation, which likely took time to develop. Another important factor was the challenging climate and geography. The Sahara Desert, which separated Sub-Saharan Africa from North Africa and Southwest Asia, was often too arid and vast to cross. Only during certain green Sahara periods, when the region was wetter and more hospitable due to shifts in the monsoon, could early humans realistically make the journey northward. Similarly, glacial periods in Eurasia made northern routes cold and inhospitable, acting as a barrier to migration. Lastly, there may not have been an immediate need to leave Africa. The continent was rich in resources and ecological diversity, providing ample opportunities for survival and adaptation. Without strong push factors such as scarcity or conflict, there was little urgency to migrate. When conditions eventually aligned, both environmentally and culturally, humans began their successful journey out of Africa around 60,000 to 70,000 years ago leading to the eventual colonization of the rest of the world. Another big question is how and when modern humans left Africa and spread across the world. There are two main theories. North Africa route, through the Nile, into Europe and Asia. Southern, coastal route, from Ethiopia across the Red Sea, along the southern Asian coast to places like Malaysia and Australia. DNA evidence supports the southern route, it suggests a single successful migration from Africa, led by people carrying the L3 genetic lineage, which later split into groups found in Asia today. This migration likely happened around 65,000 to 50,000 years ago. However, there's still little solid archaeological evidence for modern humans in Asia before 45,000 years ago. Humans are believed to have reached Majed Bebe, a rock shelter in northern Australia, around 65,000 years ago. So, researchers are now focusing on Southern Asia to find clearer proof of this early migration. Discoveries in DNA and archaeology will be key to understanding when and how our species spread worldwide.